What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna take a look at setting up your Steam Deck for dual boot with Windows and SteamOS. But before we do that, I do wanna give a shout out to a couple of people that make this possible with J-L-O-B-U-E-10 over on GitHub with his refined software for the dual boot, which works really well now, and we'll be going through that process. And also Deck Wizard, who also has a great channel, information about changing your boot picture and that type of thing. And he's also increased the amount of time to choose your OS. So I wanna give those guys some credit. I had my partition done, I had Windows running, and I was using the volume down button and boot method to change each time. And I finally came across the refined uh, information there and made dual boot possible for me. It was a lot easier to get into. With that being said, though, there are some caveats here and there. You can expect these are all unofficial methods, whether you're using a micro SD card or the internal SSD to install Windows, partitioning and that type of thing. Anything can technically happen, and while I am doing Windows 11 in this video, I highly recommend Windows 10. I do tend to have a lot of trouble with 11. Windows 10 is definitely recommended for the Steam Deck. I'm doing Windows 11 here because I needed to install it anyway to do some testing and some stuff that I was doing, um, but I did wind up taking it off and putting Windows 10 on, um, which brings me to another point that I was not able to undo all the refined stuff that we do in this video, and I got stuck having to totally re-image my Steam Deck and then partition again and install Windows again and basically start it all over from factory. So I did everything I could find online to figure out how to undo the refine, uninstall it, remove it, um, and nothing I did work. So any of you guys out there in the deck community that might know more than me about undoing all that in case you do need to reinstall Windows because it breaks it otherwise. All right, guys, let's get into how we set up the dual boot process for your Steam Deck. All right, guys, so let's start off here on our Windows PC where we need to do some work first. And I have everything ready in a Steam Deck folder I made, just makes it easier for me where I've already downloaded and put all the drivers and the software for the controller. Now you wanna go grab what version of Windows you're gonna use. Again, I highly recommend using Windows 10. It's much more stable on the Steam Deck. It's only for my own purposes that I am going to grab and install Windows 11, but you can download your media creation tool right here and be ready to run it. And we'll get to that in a little bit, or you can download for Windows 11, which I'm gonna do for myself here. But I did change my dual boot over to Windows 10 after creating this video, after I was done with Windows 11, and it does perform better for me. And also, of course, we're going to need all our Steam Deck drivers uh, here on the page, which you saw I already downloaded and put in a folder for myself. But again, these links will be in the description for you so you can grab all of this and get it ready for yourself as well. Now, Rufus is the other program we need. We're going to use this to put our Steam Deck image onto our USB as well because we'll have a USB for our Steam Deck image and we'll have another second USB for our Windows image. So two, S two USB drives you'll want preferably for this. And then we have our controller software so we can use our Steam Deck controller in Windows. So that's these top three programs you see right here that you're gonna to need to download and have ready to install on your Steam Deck once it's set up with Windows ready to go. Now the other thing we're gonna need of course is that Steam Deck image so that we can put that on our USB. We're gonna use Rufus to do that and that allows us to go in and boot from that image and do the partitioning we need to do that you can't otherwise do in desktop mode. So you will need this process to be able to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and download it and have it ready for Rufus here. All right, guys, that's all the stuff we're gonna to need to prep on our Windows PC. So I'm gonna start by opening up Rufus now I'm going to add the uh, file that we downloaded for our Steam Deck image. So I do have my USB stick stuck in there, ready to go. I'm going to go to Downloads, where I just downloaded that Steam Deck image. We'll add that into Rufus here, and there's no other options that you'll need to change. They're typically all going to be grayed out when it comes to the Steam Deck image. It's all preset. You can click Start, and it takes a little while, but it will go through its process here and create a Steam Deck recovery image for you to boot from on your USB. Now, as soon as that's done, it'll open that up for you usually. And you can see here, we got our Steam OS. So we're going to close this. We can be done with Rufus and close that out. I'm going to go ahead and go eject this USB. And then I'm going to insert my other one for my Windows. So I'll take that out and we'll get switched over. Now we're going to open up our Windows Media Creation tool we downloaded. It will be Windows 10 for you most likely. You'll see 11 here on my screen. You're just gonna click continue here, get a few things ready. You'll see a couple of options on Windows 10. You might have a few other options or versions, but uh, it's, it's basically the same as you go through the process. We'll hit next. We'll pick USB flash drive. Next, I'll pick my flash drive here. Next again, and then it'll start to get that ready. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste over my Steam Deck folder to another USB that I have. So it's easier to move these files over to my Steam Deck once it's up and running Windows without another download. 
Now with this finished, we'll be able to click finish down here. Since it's all done, it'll go ahead and do its cleanup and we can eject this USB. Now we have both our Steam OS uh, boot drive and our Windows creation, uh, two different USBs ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Steam OS USB in the back of my dock and we'll be ready to boot to that first. So we're gonna go ahead and do that by holding the down volume button and then hitting power and we're gonna continue holding that down volume button until our boot menu comes up and then we'll be able to go down and select the USB that has our Steam OS image on it that we created with Rufus. So you can see that right there, I'll click A. This takes a little bit of time so I'll fast forward but once it's done it'll take us into what looks like desktop mode but it's got a little bit of different features of course being a recovery tool for your Steam Deck. And this is what we need to use to go into our applications here and open up our KDE Partition Manager. And this is where we're gonna partition an area for Windows to be installed on. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that we have uh, our home and that is our main storage that we have available to us. You can see it's the largest amount here at the bottom. We're gonna resize this to something that I wanna pick more for uh, what I wanna have for Windows. So I'm probably gonna steal about 100 to 135 gigabytes for now uh, for my Windows install. I don't need a lot. I'm gonna put a lot of the games on an SD card uh, for it, but it'll give me enough breathing room to kinda run the OS and, and do the playing around that I wanna do uh, with it. But you can just move this slider around. You can see the uh, Steam OS is on the left, how much room it's already taken up, how much more room do you wanna give it, and then the area on the right being the amount of space um, that you're going to make for the new partition. So I'll go ahead and pick mine here. Now, when you click OK and, and these are set up and you'll see the change down here, it says 110 now on an unknown that we've resized. This isn't actually applied yet till you hit the apply button up top on the left there. So it's just showing you kind of what, what changes you've made without applying them. So even if I want to go in and resize again from that 110 and pick a different amount, I could uh, go in and do that before clicking apply. So I'll click OK and you'll see the number change down here. So we're not really doing the process yet, but we're setting it up. So I'll go down, you'll see 135 now, which I'm going to stick with for now. So we're going to right click on this because we're ready to actually partition it or format it rather. We've already partitioned it. We'll go to new. We're going to click on the file system and go to the uh, Windows file system, NTFS. And then we don't need to change anything else here. We can just click OK. And now we've given this thing two jobs to do with our partition and with our formatting. So we're going to go ahead and go up top and click apply for that. And then we'll be able to get into the apply process. It'll finish that up relatively quickly. So we'll click apply. It's going to do the shrinking of the partition. It's going to create a new partition and then it's going to format it as well. So I'll speed us up because this does take a little bit of time, but once it gets through this process, you'll see all the bars are filled up. It says that it's finished and good to go, so we'll just be able to click OK. It'll refresh, and now we have our partition NTFS with our 135 gigs on the bottom. It's a clean partition ready for our Windows install, and we've left some space on our Steam OS. So now we can go ahead and go in here, and we're gonna go ahead and shut down our Steam Deck, and then we're gonna boot from our Windows Media USB. All right, guys, so I've pulled out the other USB for Steam. I've put in the Windows Media Creation USB we made. Same process, hold volume down, hit power, hold that volume down until our boot menu comes up. And then we'll scroll down and pick our Windows boot uh, drive. So we'll go down here to my scan disk USB where our Windows Creation is at. We'll click on that and it'll boot up. Again, I'm gonna kind of fast forward, but it just gets us into the setup process here. Now it will start in portrait mode. We can change that later on pretty easily. And since I'm docked, it's kind of hard to show you this, but um, I'll go ahead and click next here, click install now, and it'll start another setup process. I'll speed us through that. It comes back to another setup, of course, where your key is at. You can do, I don't have a key for now, or if you have one you wanna put in, you can. Windows 11, you'll have internet right away. Windows 10, you won't unless you're docked. So just keep that in mind. Um, I already have keys on my account, so I'll just sign in later. I'm gonna pick Windows 11 Home here. You'd probably pick Windows 10 Home unless you had a professional key or something else you wanted to use. Then we're gonna scroll down here, agree. Next, and then we're gonna to go to custom install. And then this is probably one of the more important parts to make sure you're installing this on the proper partition. So I'll try to get this up here where you guys can see it better just for a second. And uh, you wanna make sure that you pay attention to the amount of space you grabbed because they're just gonna be partitioned by number and not by name. And I know I had 135 gigabytes and I don't wanna to touch my main drive, which says 330. So I'm not touching drive eight. Uh, the partition nine to 135 gigs, that's the one I just made. So that's the one I'm gonna highlight and put windows on. So just be sure that you're picking the partition you just made. And it'll start copying its windows files 
And when it's done doing that, it'll get into a restart. All right, there we go. We got all that in there. It's going to get ready to restart. I'm old school, just like back in the day when I used to build computers. Once this thing restarts, I can go ahead and pull the USB out uh, that we use for our Windows Media Creation because everything's now on the SSD. And I'll pop in my other USB that has all my drivers and controllers and stuff I showed you that I copied over earlier. And that'll be ready to move right onto my Steam Deck when we're set up. All right, so we're going to come back in. There's some more setup to do, whether you're in Windows 10 or 11, this will vary, but you'll either be able to sign in or create your account or whatever you need to do, create a pin, uh, choose all your options that you would normally choose when you're setting up a new uh, device on Windows. I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a new device. Again, your options may vary a little bit depending on what version of Windows you're using. I'll create my pin. I'm going to go ahead and finish set up here rather quickly and get us to the desktop mode. All right, so we're in desktop mode. First thing we want to do is bring up the display options, scroll down and change portrait to landscape so that we can see what we're doing, keep changes, and there we go. We actually have Windows on here now on its own partition. We haven't touched SteamOS, and we're ready to start setting it up with all the drivers and stuff. So let's move on to that. All right, so let's get into this. I kind of messed up too, and I already installed the uh, LAN driver down here, the, uh, the Wi-Fi driver down here, so I extracted it already and installed it. Really simple process, same as everything else you're going to see here. Moving on to the next driver, I'm going to right click, extract all, extract this one. This is going to be our Bluetooth driver. I'll go in here and select on install driver, click more info, click run anyway. This will be a pretty quick one right here. doesn't take very long. This will finish its process and then close. And that'll be our Bluetooth driver in, and we've got our Wi-Fi driver in, which again was the same process basically as this one. We'll move on to the next, which will do our SD card reader driver. Uh, it's no particular order necessarily. You could even do your APU driver first. I've done that before and just worked my way down the list. Um, just so happens that I just kind of did it in this order. But anyway, the Bay Hub here for SD, we'll right click, extract all, extract. Open this up. We'll just click on the setup. Click yes. You can disable that feature as well if you need to. So you don't have to click yes all the time in your UAC uh, user control settings. And uh, you can search for that. So we'll go to next here. It'll finish its process. I'm not going to restart right now. I want to install the rest of my drivers first. So we can close this out. Now I'll go ahead and do the uh, audio drivers. So the first driver here, we're going to go ahead and do a similar right click and extract all, but these two are a little different on how you install them. So I do like to show the process. We'll open this folder. Now the one that says setup information is the one that you need to highlight and then right click and then you'll see install. So it's a little bit different than how you, some of your other files uh, work. It'll be pretty quick. And now we're going to do the same thing to the next audio driver. So we'll go down one. We're going to extract this one. And again, this has the uh, setup information. So we'll click on here. We'll highlight, right click, install. Now the two audio drivers are installed and we're down to our APU driver. All right, click OK and close out of this. And moving on to our APU driver. Again, we just extract. This won't take a little bit longer because it's a bigger file, but it won't be too bad, especially since we're on our internal SSD here. Open up the file, go to setup, and now we can go ahead and go through the process here to set up and install your APU driver. Pretty self-explanatory, like setting up any other uh, AMD GPU uh, driver here. All right, now it looks like it's ready to go. Um, Additional options, nothing you need to worry about right now on here. Full install, we'll click that. I'll go ahead and fast forward us right to the end here. It installed just fine, didn't have any problems. I'll click finish. Now I do have my uh, brightness capabilities now since my APU driver is installed. And I also have, uh, you can't hear it here, but I have uh, audio control now and everything's coming through nice and clear for me. And they did fix the audio drivers. I have the newest October audio driver for this, so it's not crashing uh, in Windows 11 anymore and causing that problem. I'm still not keeping 11, still going, still went back to 10, but at least they did have that new driver that helped out. 
All right, so all of those drivers are installed. I'm going to do a restart. After the restart, I'm going to come in here to our SWICD folder and install our controller drivers, starting with the VIGEM bus here. So we're going to open this up first, and you really should do it in this order from what I understand. Uh, we'll go down here and click Next. We'll agree. Click Next, Install. And these are, this is a pretty quick process to get all three of these installed, and then, then we'll have everything we need for using a controller and anything that's not a Steam game. Steam handles the controller fine. We'll go to VC here now and install this. Uh, if you're running a Steam game, you don't need to run SWICD. Uh, but if you're running Epic or Origin or Ubisoft or any of those, uh, this is where uh, SWICD will come in or your Game Pass um, with your Xbox app. Click More Info, click Run Anyway for SWICD, click Yes. Click OK, Next, I agree. Everything's checked off, yep, click Next. All right, now with all three of those installed, we have all of our controller software installed, ready for setup later as well. All of our drivers are installed, so those are done. And now we're pretty much ready to go ahead and set up our dual boot. So let's go ahead and get into that next. So I've shut down the Steam Deck, and I'm going to do that similar process here. Hold the volume down button, press power, continue holding volume down to your boot menu. And we want to boot into SteamOS. We have to do this because otherwise it'll default boot into Windows, and we need to get back to SteamOS's desktop mode here to finish our dual boot setup. So I'll go to my SteamOS. I'm going to boot into that. Once you're into SteamOS, you will then need to go ahead and hit your Steam button, go to power, and go to switch to desktop because we want to go to desktop mode here in SteamOS to set up the actual dual bootloader uh, setup for the Steam Deck. So now we are at desktop mode. I'm actually going to switch us over to screen capture so you can see better what I'm typing and doing here. All right, guys, so now I'm screen capping that desktop mode. It'll be a lot easier for you to see exactly what we're doing here. So the first thing we want to do is go into our settings tab right here, our system settings. We open that up, and then we're going to go over to users right here. And what we're going to need to do is just set up a password, because during the setup for Refine, it's going to ask us for this password, and it's easier if we already have it set up. So once we're here at your account, we're just going to click Change Password. Pick something very easy that you know you won't have a problem with. I'm just going to put Steam for both of mine, all lowercase here. So I'll double check that, and we have Steam. And then I'll click Set Password, and then we don't need to change our wallet password or anything like that. Um, so we're good with that. And now we have Steam set up for that password. So that'll make that easier when we get into setup. We'll close that out. We're going to come over here to Application Launcher. I'll go to All Applications, and we're going to launch our console, and this is where we'll do all of the installing from for our dual boot. So I'll expand this. I'll go pretty slowly here so it's easy for you to see what I'm typing out. It's got to be exactly right for lowercase, uppercase, spacing, and all of that. So get space clone space http colon forward slash forward slash github dot com forward slash deck with a capital D wizard with a capital W and forward slash steam deck all one word lowercase underscore dual boot forward slash enter and you should see this pop up right here ready for our next command so we're going to type in cd space steam deck underscore dual boot hit enter and on our next line we're going to do a ch mod space plus lowercase x space steam with a capital s deck capital d no space underscore Refine with capital E F I in the middle underscore install dot S H. Hit enter. Now we're going to type in period forward slash Steam Deck capital S capital D underscore Refine with a capital E F I again in the middle underscore install dot S H. Enter. Now here's that password that we were talking about. So you're going to type your password here, but it won't show up. You won't see anything happen. Just type it and hit enter, and then it should proceed on with the install. This might take a couple of minutes, but it'll go through this process. 
once it does, you'll get down to the bottom here and it'll show you that it's finished installing. That's pretty much it for that setup. Once that's done, we can go in here and click close. We're going to go to application launcher and we're going to restart our deck and we'll go see if it worked for our dual boot. All right, guys, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and watch it restart here after clicking restart from desktop mode. And here you see it. We do have dual boot popping right up here for Steam and Windows. You have 15 seconds to choose and you got to use the trackpad here to select. And then you can hit A or right trigger to select it once you've highlighted it with the touchpad there. So we'll go ahead and launch right into Steam OS. I'm going to do this part real time just so you can kind of see the process. And it does seem to take a little longer its first time here. Got a little bit quicker as I went and used this more going back and forth. Like I said, I did decide to change back over to Windows 10. And when I took out Windows 11 and repartitioned or reformatted that partition again uh, that you saw me make in the beginning of the video, Refine doesn't leave the Steam OS and I couldn't get it out no matter what I did, meaning when I reinstalled Windows on that partition, it would not restart and boot into setup. Uh, Refine was causing a problem there. And no matter what I did, what steps I tried to go through, I couldn't get rid of it, so I re-imaged the Steam Deck and started completely over and ended Windows 10. Any of you guys know more about getting refined out of there or undoing this process, uh, I'd definitely like to know because I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. But here you go, we've restarted. It went right into the boot manager again here, and this time I'll pick Windows. I'll hit A. But this is a really cool feature, even with a few of the little issues here and there. Um, honestly, it's, it's really neat to be able to do this dual boot process, and then you can still use an SD card for for storage. So you see Windows booted in pretty quickly there uh, without any problem. And uh, yeah, that's a setup for your dual boot. And we're back on Windows here. So what I want to do before we wrap up this video is give you a quick little guide on how to set up your controller. All right, so let's get into the controller setup here in Steam and how things are working. Right now, Steam is open and it's controlling how my touchpads are working. They work for click and all that type of thing. We're not having to use the triggers and it works really well. And I have Steam opening with Windows because I like the way it works, but also because that's kind of how we need to do things for this controller support. If you're playing a Steam game, you don't need SWICD open. Steam will handle the controls for you and you'll be just fine. But playing a game from any of your other launchers, you'll need it open after Steam is running. So I'm going to go ahead and open that driver now and we'll get into kind of what's happening with it, the setup, and why do I have Steam open even if I'm not playing a Steam game. So now that that's open, let me go ahead and bring up the uh, the software here. So we're going to exit Steam. It's going to stop controlling everything here for my touchpads and everything. And now Windows is going to be back in control, which means we're back to having to use the triggers instead of the touchpads to click here, which is fine. But what happens is when we get into the SWICD here, and you'll see the lizard mode up top there and the two checkboxes for the mouse movement and the button inputs. And those are what we have to disable to get this to work inside of a game and not get confused by mouse input um, over on Windows side. But what will happen is once I click these, Windows will no longer have access to these touchpads and we won't be able to move around anymore. And we'll only be able to have touch controls, which is why I always have Steam open because that doesn't happen with Steam. It'll still work. So... We'll click Disable Lizard Mode, and you'll see here instantly my touchpad has stopped working. Windows can't control that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and disable the buttons here. and But ultimately, this is what we want, because when we're in-game, this is what will have the controller working properly. If I don't have Lizard Mode disabled, it will swap back and forth rapidly between, like, keyboard and mouse and controller or not map things correctly and give you issues. So you really want to have Steam open. And if you're playing a non-Steam game, you open SWICD and make sure your lizard modes are disabled and you should be good for any of your games with any of the launchers. Um, that's basically how the setup works with that. I'm going to reopen Steam here and just show you. I got to use the touch screen here or disable lizard mode, but I want to leave those checked off because that's how I'm going to have things set up. And once Steam opens up here, you'll see I instantly have trackpads and everything working again and I can click with the trackpads and all of that even with lizard mode disabled in SWICD here. So you'll see instantly now we're back in action with the trackpads and everything and with lizard mode disabled SWICD will be translated properly in the games and we won't have any weird issues and everything should work fine. Now I haven't remapped any buttons or done anything in here to change anything. It was an, as easy as install Steam, install SWICD, run Steam, and then, and then run this program, disable lizard mode, and then it just works in all my games. But you can go through and map things if you want to. You can have the Steam button be the Windows key or anything like that that you want. Currently the Steam button will default to the Xbox button basically bringing up those menus. But I haven't had any problems with this. It's been an easy way to set things up and get working in all of my games that are non-Steam games. So if you guys have any issues with this, let me know. But it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple once you get into it. 
All right, there you have it, guys. Your complete guide for setting up dual boot with Windows 10 or 11 really on your Steam Deck. Again, for now, at the time I'm making this video, I do recommend sticking with 10, but go for 11 if you want to give it a shot. But just keep in mind that if you have to reinstall Windows or make any major changes, it gets a little bit more complicated when it comes to the uh, refine and all that as I was talking about. But anyways, I'm really enjoying dual boot. Now that I've got it down, I've got everything really working well. It's a nice convenient process on the Steam Deck. I still can't wait for the official dual boot from Valve to see how that works. I think it'll be a little bit more friendly. Um, but anyways, until then, these workarounds will get us there for our dual boot. Alright guys, thanks a lot for coming to watch the video. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell, leave me your comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.